Hi everybody, I am Mia Romine and I am presenting on chapter 7 of Rama Chandran's Fancies in the Brain book and I am focusing on some of the ideas that he places about the left and the right hemisphere. So it's been established that the left and the right hemispheres are specialized for different functions. So one clear example of this is how the left is responsible for language and the right for spatial reasoning. Um, however, instead of the two just working away on their own task, um, it seems that they are a bit more complementary, so often working on the same tasks but just doing different things. Ramachandran suggests another example of the complementary functions of the two hemispheres. So on pa page 136 of chapter 7, he hypothesizes that the left hemisphere is responsible for folding in new information into our pre-existing worldviews or schemas. The right, on the other hand, is responsible for playing a little bit more of a devil's advocate, so questioning the status quo and looking for global inconsistencies. Um, he suggests that there is a certain threshold for these discrepancies, and if that threshold is not met, then the left can go about it. The right hemisphere, on the other hand, is responsible for playing a little bit of a devil's advocate, so that is questioning the status quo and looking for global inconsistencies. He suggests that there is a certain threshold for these discrepancies, and if that threshold is not met, then the left can go about its business and folding in new information into our pre-existing model of reality. If, however, that threshold is exceeded, then the right hemisphere steps in and says, hey, we need to rework this model and forces a restart. Without the help of the right hemisphere, the left hemisphere will either ignore the anomaly or distort it in order to squeeze it into our pre-existing worldview. Ramachandran suggests that this is the basis for Freud's defenses, so denial, repression, confabulation, etc. Ramachandran offers some of his own proof of the existence of the discrepancy meter through Dr. Christopher Frith on page 142. So Dr. Frith conducted the study with a mirror box where he had participants place both arms into the mirror box and had them move both synchronously and out of sync. And he would have them do this for both sides of the body. So placing the mirror on the left side of the box so they would look at their left hand and then placing the mirror on the right side of the box so they would see their right hand. When the, the asymmetrical movements of the arms caused a discrepancy between the visual and motor feedback, and Frith found that a small region in the right hemisphere consistently lit up whenever this discrepancy was encountered. And this happens whether the discrepancy was coming from the left or the right side of the body. So I went and did a little bit of research on my own. And I found a couple of things. So Margaret Blake conducted a study with 28 participants, 14 with no brain damage and 14 with right hemisphere damage, where each participant read four, sto four short stories, one line at a time, provided on a computer screen. The stories were written to have high or low predictability of a specific outcome. So this was judging predictive inference, where prediction of future observations are based on past um, observations. Participants indicated by pressing a button when they were done with a line of a story in order to move on to the next line. Afterwards, they were asked comprehensive questions about the story that they had just read. It was found that those with right hemisphere damage showed evidence of activating prediction only in highly predictable contexts. And when they did produ produce those inferences, they typically needed extra integration time in comparison with those with no brain damage when faced with an outcome that contradicted the predicted outcome. Similarly, in another study, participants listened to stories that were separated into multiple episodes that specifically promoted coherence inferences. So that's making predictions that demonstrate comprehension. Those with right hemisphere damage poorly integrated new input with earlier information from the discourse and subsequently had trouble revising their initial interpretations. Also, a difference in semantic processing was noted between the two hemispheres in this study, and when so when comprehending single ambiguous words, the right hemisphere retains multiple word meanings, whereas the left hemisphere selects a single um, interpretation of the word. It was proposed that the left hemisphere might have a limited semantic field due to its fine coding of words, and the right hemisphere might have a broader semantic field. 
The results of this study lend some weight to this hypothesis, as those with right hemisphere damage had a harder time drawing connections between words that would allow them to correctly inference the events of the story. Studies suggest that the left hemisphere did incorporate new information as the participants encountered it, but perhaps lacking the right hemisphere's signal of a discrepancy and initiating the rework of previous predictions, the left hemisphere just had trouble making the necessary changes, thus coming to false or inaccurate um, conclusions. In times where the information may be threatening or challenging to the self, the left may just decide not to integrate the information at all, leading to Freud's defenses such as denial and repression. In yet another study um, conducted by Garrison et al., where they studied anisognosia in schizophrenia patients, this provided the opportunity to, to explore functional neuroanatomy of denial in those with our right hemisphere brain damage. They found relatively reduced right hemisphere and or relatively increased left hemisphere volume, specifically in the medial prefrontal cortex, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, insula, and anterior temporal lobe in relation to impaired illness awareness. The hypothesis was that there would be greater left hemisphere activity in relation to right hemisphere activity, and the results showed that left hemisphere dominance did correlate to illness denial and anosognosia secondary to right hemisphere damage. Ramachandran briefly noted that there was a lack of cultiv cultivation of skills associated with right hemisphere specialties in schools, and I posit that this may contribute to left hemisphere dominance which results in the use of defenses such as denial, repression, confabulation in our own lives. Um, thus leading to our own biases in many aspects of our lives relating to self-judgments, judgments of others, and schemas. The evidence presented in the last study I mentioned relating to left hemisphere dominance and the correlation to denial, even without the presence of right hemisphere damage, perhaps give footing to this hypothesis. But there has been little to no research on the matter, at least that I could find so far. And it would be very interesting to take advantage of the brain imaging technologies we have today and see if there is any evidence of a shift in dominance of brain hemispheres.